Hey, so this is going to be a very different video from my usual stuff. Uh, we are going to take apart a smart plug and slap a custom firmware on it. The main reason why I'm doing this video is because uh, the main video on this particular smart plug is rather outdated and wasn't very clear to begin with. And since I own like six of these, I figured I make something more up to date while I'm at it. To start off, this is a Sunoff S31, the non-light version, where additional metrics like power consumption is supported. This has become one of my favorite IoT devices because of how cheap it is, and the fact that it supports Tasmoda is the main reason why I picked it up. According to Amazon, you can get like four of these at $33.99 at time of recording. With that being said, I bought mine used online for about 7 bucks a pop for each here in Taiwan since I prefer buying uh, used electronics rather than new. A few prerequisites should be noted before we start though, as you're going to need a few things. An FTDI adapter to flash the firmware to the board over USB. Uh, basic soldering knowledge. Uh, don't worry if you're new to this, it's extremely simple. In fact, I'm pretty terrible at soldering, but even I could do it. Uh, the latest has Muda firmware on their GitHub repository. Uh, something called an easy F ESP flasher for writing the firmware, a Phillips Zero screwdriver, and a prying tool. Alright, so this is the Sunoff S31. As you can see, mine still has a warranty sticker on there, and for whatever reason, some void sticker residue at the front there. Don't ask me how that got there, it was already there when I first got it. Now, to get into this device, we're going to need to remove the rails on the side. And uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we need to first pry off the gray panel on the side there. The easiest way to do that is that I just jam a pry tool into the rail and push it up towards the panel. And the panel should become loose. Oop, that went flying. Anyways, now that the panel is off, uh, we can slide the rails off to reveal the three screws holding the unit together. Now we simply take a Phillips Zero screwdriver and unscrew the screws to take the top off. After the unit is out, you can see that the whole unit is extremely simple and is rather tinker friendly, thankfully. Uh, as the main power board, we want to focus on this, this thing on the right there. I've clearly marked out VCC, RX, TX, and ground pins. Now you may have noticed that there are two sets of TX and RX. Uh, ignore the ones next to the ground pin. I'm not entirely sure what they're for. It might be related to debugging since the uh, there's a D prefix there. But I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to flash the firmware through there. Now how are we going to flash them? With a simple FTDI adapter of course, that allows us to flash the firmware through UART via USB. I bought a generic one online, so yours may not look the same as mine, but they should all pretty much do the same thing. Uh, the only ones we're interested here are the VCC, Ground, TX, and RX. Now, this part is important uh, and was left out in the other video that I watched. Uh, the comment sections were quite confused. The TX on the adapter should go towards the RX on the plug, and vice versa for the RX on the adapter. Now I simply solder these wires on. Excuse the lame soldering skills, I'm still awful at this. Now we are ready to begin flashing the firmware. To boot the device into flashing mode, we need to hold down the power button on the S31 and connect the FTDI to the computer. If done right, the device should now be ready. Now if we open up the ESP Easy Flasher application, we can now select the COM device and select the firmware we had just downloaded from the GitHub repository and click flash on the bottom right. If everything goes well, the flashing should now begin. And if your device like mine has a set of TX and RX indicator light, then they should begin to flash as well. Wait a few moments and it should finish flashing. Now that it's done, we can disconnect the FTDI from the computer and disconnect the wire and put everything back together.
Here I have my power strip. Let's plug the S31 into the outlet. If everything goes well, a new AP that starts with the word Tasmoda should soon show up in your Wi-Fi list. Uh, after that, it should connect to the initial Wi-Fi configuration page for Tasmoda, asking you to set up the AP for Tasmoda to connect to. Uh, if everything goes well, it should show up with a new IP for you to connect to. Navigate to the IP that was just shown to you, and you should be greeted with the Tasmoda sub page. Now, the first thing we want to fix is the uh, default configuration. Since out of the box, Tasmodo identifies this device as Sonoff Basic. And we want to change that to Sonoff S31 by going into the module configuration and select the module type and change it to Sonoff S31. Next step is optional. If you have a Mosquito server, uh, input the Mosquito server details as well as the username and password. And now, finally, let's configure our device name to something a little bit more identifiable. I'll be using this as a peripheral hub next to my PC, so I'll name it PC Peripherals R. By the way, you can set up a web admin password if you don't want people to tamper with the device, uh, I, like I have for most of my Sonoff S31s. Now, the last thing I do want to mention is that you should not attempt to upgrade the firmware with the firmware upgrade menu because uh, it has never worked for me and it will instead boot to the device into the uh, emergency mode due to lack of space. If you want to upgrade the firmware, you might need to take the unit apart again just to update, which is kind of a major downside of the device, but it shouldn't happen too often anyways. And that'll be it. Uh, I know this is a bit of a different video from my usual ones, so yeah, I hope whoever stumbled upon this will find it useful. And have fun!